Um, any question? Give me the um, the um, wire, that are for the iPhone. This is for the iPhone, and you need um, right them. Like? I okay. got a power bank in my bag, yeah. Alright, okay. Are you here? for this title and we'll give you a rundown of the names and numbers we start off with the number one the national champion of Belize Miss Kaya Katus riding for LA Sweat number two being Miss Maya Mia, Mia Scarlato, Mia Scarlato mm -hmm. LA Sweats rider number three being Regina Dolly from LA Sweats. Rider number six, Elizabeth Stevenson, also from LA Sweats. And rider number nine, K Kala Garcia Arche, riding for LA Sweats. Then we go to rider number five, yep. Gab Gabriel Gab Gabriel, riding for G Flow. Rider number seven, seven. Natalie Lovell, riding for Team Lovell. Rider number 11, Julian Aguila, riding for Williams Racing Cycling Team. Rider number 12, Alexis Ramirez, also riding for Williams Cycling Team. And rider number 13, Lori Sharp, riding for Williams Racing Cycling Team. And rider number 18, Mary Monton, riding for Williams Racing Cycling Team. So folks, 11 women. We Bye. have four Americans, two Mexicans. A Jamaican. A Jamaican, mm -hmm. a Trinidad and Tobagan, and three Belizeans. That makes up the 11 riders. Okay, so um, well, do you think the record will be broken today given the temperature and the weather? Well, it, it the, the weather is in their favor, but the race ha has just started mm -hmm. up. We don't know what kind of activities are happening or what speeds we are doing. So we will we'll be, we have to wait a while before we can start predicting about records, no? Mm -hmm. um, we must say that the record is held by Miss Brenda Aguayo of three hours, seven minutes and 24 seconds, uh, 29 seconds, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. 30729 is the record by the Mexican Miss Brenda Aguayo. Um, folks, we're on the road. Uh, the race is just about to start. They have crossed over the Hawksworth Bridge and the official, it's a rollout start and the officials are just about getting ready to drop the flag and get this big one started. So um, let's explain to the folks what really a rollout is for people who don't know. Morning, Belize. Um, 
basically a rollout is where the riders they ride at a very slow pace and then when they reach at a, at a certain destination they get the flag and they okay to just go out so that's what we're watching right now the rollout is normally about a mile you'd say yes yeah a mile or so and then it mile gets two. Hard. yeah yes. i'm i'm particular particularly excited today dave because um not because three Belizeans have lined up, but because there are so many foreigners. Yes. So we can expect, like Pala said, fireworks, a lot of fireworks, because you have, I call it the Kaya team Belize versus the Williams team. Yes. So <laughs> we should see some real cycling. I hope we won the hotel for three hours or less. Right, and I'm also um, good, excited good. because the race has grown to where you see a lot of foreign competitors and that um, that makes the race a little bit more exciting. So um, expect some fireworks today, as Bala said. <laughs> no kata these, uh, these two teams are basically <laughs> familiar with, with each other, Scotty race overseas together. So um, there's a rivalry going on there. Somebody don't boss out, Palas. Yeah. So, so as long as we drop, we should have a time. We should have a time for free phone. 805. Did you get it? It was 805 when they started. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure um, um, when Brenda set that record back then, um, it was similar whether she had to set that in in this type of condition where she was riding an art. I think right now it's also an art, but the way the way this race will be right tactical a bit. So um, you'll get the fireworks maybe later in the race, or maybe in, in the climbs per se. So I don't think they'll do 307. 307.29 is the was time. Rider number 13 is the, is the Jamaican rider, Miss mm -hmm. Laurie Sharp, on the PS, riding for Williams, fo followed by rider number 11, the Mexican, Miss Julian Agu Aguia, Julian, uh -huh. followed by Miss Gabby Gabriel, the Belizean rider there. Miss Gabby Gabriel, plus young, young girl that is moved up and really developed herself. She's come a, a long way. She's, ri she's ridden internationally for Belize before. Um, she, she, she gives a good account for herself. Yeah, she surely has. And um, thanks must be given to the C. Ray clan, um, which Kabi came up from. And so um, Ray Kat and her family has really put into her. And then she's also now with the, C, um, with the G Flow team, one of the most formidable team in Belize. So um, we expect great things from Gabi. She's young. Um, in this field, she, she, she would be the, the least, um, apart from Lovell, she would be the least um, experienced rider in respect to these the other ladies that are here riding this race today. But we should see, she should give good account of herself. And so we should look at a great race today from Gabi as well. Natalie is uh, is the least um, experienced in this field. Natalie, you rode this race? Nat Already no. Lovell? This is her first time. Oh, first, first time. I know, but Natalie is here. Natalie yes. Lovell is here. Okay. First time. Okay. Yeah. I'm, as I say, she she might be the least experienced in this in this is peloton. Is pro peloton. I don't know if um, basically that's a lot of. Um, this is the, what what is important to be said for us to let viewers know where the race is at and so because people don't, we might know, but people don't know. Um, they are just coming out of Esperanza Village and they will go into Central Farm shortly and so that will give a good idea. Uh, but look at the pace in the set. It, it, it's, it's not a torrid pace as well. So that's the reason why I, I came up quickly and said that I don't think that they'll be able to to, to break this record today because er early the, the, the pace is not, is, not, is not that great. Palace, it, it seems like it both these teams are, are balancing out each other, so none of them are really aggressing the race. It seems that uh, the the Williams team and the LA Sweats team, like you said, they've, they, they've raced against each other before, so they're, they're pretty familiar with one another uh, and stuff. Uh, we're, like you said, coming out of Esperanza, heading towards Central Farm. So the, as we can see, all 11 riders are still together, um, just a, a steady tempo being set by by the Williams cycling team. Um, 
that's um, Lovell is in white, number seven. Uh, Kaya Katus is riding in the national colors of Belize, number one. The LA Sweats girls are in green. Um, I think the, there is Gabby Gabriel in blue. And then number 12 being uh, the Trinidadian national champion is in white with the Trinidadian flag, the, 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 red, the red barrier around her. Um, number 13 is the Jamaican um, rider, Lori Sharp, for the Williams cycling team. So Lori Sharp on the front, Dave, she's the lady driving the train. Yes, um, as you can see that the um, Williams cycling team is setting the pace for the race. So basically what they do is that they set the tone of and dictate how the race will be ridden. Um, if you notice, the top three riders right on the front and they're sharing the pace. Um, the LA Sweat team is playing defense right now where they just sit back and watch and try to see where um, they can capitalize on the other team mistakes. So basically the first 10, 15 miles, it's just basically everybody's feeling out to each other and see you know, the strengths. Definitely, folks. We must uh, mention this is the third, third running of the women's cross country, sponsored by Puma, Puma Energy. The, they are the main sponsors of this race. Um, we're looking at 73 miles, folks, 73 mile race here in the beautiful jewel of Belize. Um, we must say, Palace, that the weather has turned in favor of the riders, because yesterday was a screamer. Today it's nice and cool. You even have on a jacket, Mr. Joseph. Yes, as I know I'm in front of the Caribbean Sea, so I didn't take no chance. He have on a jacket, can you match a hat? Well, when, you, when you get old as well, you said you, the, the weather affects you more. Well, definitely, but um, we must say, um, compared to the, to the previous couple of days, the weather has changed in favor of the of the riders, I would say. Um, I, I would say, say quickly that God is a good God. Always. The the junior guys had a <laughs> had it so rough last week, and I don't I, I just think that maybe God looked down and said, okay, I'm <laughs> I'm not going to punish these women like that this week, so I'll give them a break, and then I'll punish the the big guys next week again. <laughs> so we want to um, again thank Puma for sponsoring this event. But to say that for the person, the woman that crosses the finish line first, she gets three thousand dollars in cash and a garland donated by Sole Arguayes. She also gets six hundred in cash in memory of Miss Rose McNabb, who supported her husband, Denfield McNabb, father, former Olympian and president of the Cycling Federation of Belize, a passionate cyclist. Five hundred dollars cash donated by the families of Dorothy Chanona and Elswit Kowe, a whole bottle of champagne, donated by loyal, Loyalty Wine, one gift basket, donated by Grace Kennedy Belize, and another gift basket, donated by Suncast Limited. Second place winner gets $1,500 in cash. So half of that 3,000 palace. 215 in cash, donated by Dorothy Chanona and Elswit Kowe. One gift basket, again, by Grace Kennedy Belize, and one gift ga basket by San Cass. So that's what we have for um, first and second. There are a lot of lucrative prizes along the way. Um, uh, call station, can, can, can quickly station go prizes. Did the third place prize oh, well. Okay, there you go. Third <coughs> place winner, a whole thousand dollars in cash, donated by Puma, of course. Big up Puma again, $150 in cash donated by the families of Dorothy Chanona and Elswit Kowe, one gift basket by Grace Kennedy, and another one by Stan Cass, and also the, sweet, the sweetener in your cup of tea. If the first place winner is a Belizean, you'll get 5,000 in cash, donated by Katu's Trucking Aggregates, Katu's Construction Aggregates and Trucking. So there are also some special prizes Four or five category first place, 500 cash, Puma, gift basket, Grace Kennedy, special rider, eh? special prize, last, last rider to cross 
the finish line, there were 100 in cash. Yes, Don't folks, it and it seems that the race now is just starting to get exciting. We see an attack there by, by, by one, of the, one of the Williams girls. They, they, they have decided that this, um, this warm-up is over. The race is on. And as we are passing Central Farm, we see here on the back Miss, Miss, Miss Natalie Lovell Julie. struggling to hold on. And okay. there we go, folks. The race is on. Three riders, three riders okay. trying to make a break. Three riders out front, going through Central Farm, and followed strongly the Jamaican bringing up the, the main peloton. As we see, we're back together, as we would say. Um, peloton intact. Just Taken a little excited by. to get you guys all excited. Kaya Katus and Gabby Gabriel on the tail. Pulling on on this little climb going up behind Central Farm there, Dave. And that's not a little climb. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, the race is getting hot. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. Like I said, uh, the two teams are very much familiar with each other, and so we'll expect. The, okay, there are, there are about two of them that I can't see, I can't come for, but that little fly that went was quickly reeled in. That's so coming at the back, we see, um, is that Gabby Great Brawl still in it, in third? She's still there, right, Palas? No, that's, no, that's Gabby. Yeah, Gabby is riding right G floor. Okay, sorry, so that's Alexis Ramirez. Yeah. Right there, Williams. Hey, look like that Williams, they put some heat pan in, no? Yes, yes. Um, that Williams team is well coached. Uh, that's the branch from Justin and Corey and Kalman mm -hmm. from the same camp. So they are well coached and they are uh, well fit. So it's, this will be a very interesting race. Um, Elizabeth also have a good team. It, it looks also to me like, like Nat Natalie was dislodged. Yes. She's been dislodged. She came to she came back. No, she, she came back. Yeah, she okay. just make it back to the peloton. So yes. Okay. okay, so they're all together again. So we want to say, let's go over the teams, the LA Sweat Girls, Mia, Regina, Elizabeth, and Kaya. Uh, she's Kayla. All right, so they are the ones that is wearing the LA Sweat jersey that is green and I think a kind of cream. And hey, you notice that girl really they do a thing. Lori Sharp, is that her? Jamaican, yeah, yep. Jamaican. she looks strong. Hey, you notice something, the peddling style. You notice the yes. LA, the LA um, sweat it, girls? Um, <laughs> if you notice the, um, the peddling show with most of the riders in this um, peloton, it's smooth and it's smooth. in circles. Yep. So that tells me one that everybody is still strong. The, on their toes. Yes, <laughs> um, you will expect that as the but race gets longer they, to they, diminish. They, but they, they know what they're doing as well, so. They don't, they don't know pedal pong as here so far, no? You know, one thing the female, female peloton worldwide is too, they, they, they ride a, a high cadence as well. In the men side, I don't know if the men got too much testosterone, we always want to push on big gear and everything there. But the female side, everybody look at this, everybody just have a, oh, 90 RPM for sure. So they're making, explain that pedal cadence, right? They're making more um, circles per pedal. Yeah, which, and they're which, going which, which, on a lighter which, gear uh, per minute. Which is on a lighter gear. revolution per minute. But, mm -hmm. they, but they, would, they, they, they would be consuming more energy with the high RPM, but they'll be saving their, their strength as well on, on the longer run. Someone that, that uses a, a lighter gear will, would last longer, you know, and they, they, they come to an attack. But the attack went off price. and is that a station what, what happens you have, as, as soon as a LA sweat rider moves, one from... Um, William Cycling move as well. So, mm. so th th they're riding smart as well. That's so Mary Joyce Monton. She's been here already. Number 14. She's been here. Or she's ridden she already. Yeah. Well. Okay. Um, and we see our good friend, Mr. Ordonez, doing his thing, bring it up, bringing us the live feed. Yeah, let's go back to that cadence that Palace was talking <laughs> earlier. Um, the cadence also have a lot to do with the speed of the race. Um, so the faster the race go, the higher cadence, and that's when you have to use higher gears. 
or heavier gears in order to uh, reduce. You want to keep a cadence anywhere from 80 to 90 RPM. That way you can be not only consuming energy, but you're not overworking the muscle. Uh, usually when you overwork the muscle, as the race get longer, you tend to put a lot of stress that will end up causing you to catch what you call a cramp in Belize. So um, yeah, you want to keep it at a cadence that is consistent with the uh, speed of the race, and that's what we're seeing right now. Definitely, Dave. Um, we must say that um, it seems now that the, 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 the race is starting to be aggressive a little more by both teams. Uh, we've seen um, Elias Sweats made a move. Um, I must say it seems that from so far in the race, it seems that Kaya Katus is just sitting in, trying to conserve as best. Uh, Gabby, Gabby Gabriel is, is holding, and, and Natalie Lovell here is struggling. Every time the pace gets high, she, she can't take it, but what she does, and which is good, is she just keeps pedaling. Because the minute you stop pedaling, your momentum dies down, but and her, it, then her it's... Her, an, her gears, beset seems to be too light. Though. Yes, her, definitely, her definitely. It's too high. She, she needs to know what gear to use, because when the wheels fix up, I, 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 her, her RPM just gets higher. Rather, it should, be, should, it should remain, so she's not changing her gears. Right, she's not time. utilizing her gears at all, Palacio. Definitely right. So, so um, she's spinning? Folks, folks what we, what we want to let you know, um, Mr. Adonis, we're having a little issue with his uh, microphone. Um, as soon as that is fixed, he will join the broadcast with, with the four of us here sitting in Belize City. Mr. Ardonis is sitting on a motorcycle, and he will be giving you that live pedal by pedal. Um, Gabby Gabriel. Gabby Gabriel, folks, riding for G-Flow, sits on the tail behind Kaya Katus, followed in front by um, her Kaya's teammate, rider number three, which is Regina, Regina. Regina Dotti. Mm -hmm. uh, rider number 14 is the LA's, is the Williams um, team, Joyce Monton. Rider number 12 is the Trinidadian, Alexis Ramirez. Rider number 11 is the Mexican, Jolene Aguilar. Both of those are riding for the Williams Racing Team. So on the front right now, the lady that's been on the front for most of this race so far has been the Jamaican, Miss Lori Sharp, riding from Jamrock, as we would say there. Yes, yes, I tell. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this race is beginning to start to pick up, so as you can Laurie see, the, 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 the cadence driving is the increasing and some of the girls. Yeah. At this time, we'll go Here's over to Mr. Andrew Ordonez on the bike. Makes her way uh, he will be just your the new broadcaster for the next couple of minutes. Penny, yes. So let's go over to Andrew. Laurie Sharp heading for the prize, riding for Williams Racing and She's not been contested, she will win that prize. Lori Sharp win that prize, followed by number two. Mia, Mia, Mia is a rider. Mia Scarletta uh, following young Miss Laurie Sharp from Jamaica. As we make our way down Floral Park, folks, the riders are doing some 33 miles an hour. Here comes number 11. Here comes number 11 again. This is some pain, yes. She's been marked by her teammate. Alec. Alexis Ramirez. So it's two Williams riders on the front driving the pace. It's all Williams, it's all Williams. The four riders as we make our way up uh, three, uh, go slow, whatever they call this hill. It's number 14. Number 14 rides for it's Joyce, Joyce Morton, Joyce Morton. Number 14, as she makes her way up this climb, she's been marked by young Mia Scarletto from Elias Sweats. And these girls are doing some blistering, 24 miles and up this little incline. 
look at the smoothness of number 14 Joycelyn Morton a small gap have been opened up to the rest of riders here comes the illicit rider um, Elizabeth Stephen Singer she blow past these, these girls yes she's the illicit rider as she makes her way up this incline it's all Elizabeth Morton I mean um, Elizabeth Stevenson we want to thank each and uh, all the fans tuning in today in the 33rd running of the Puma women's cross-country event folks one week away from big holy Saturday cross-country race today we have some for the six station prizes we want to thank all the people giving those beautiful prizes as Elizabeth Stevenson making her way to the top and here comes the group of riders we here we have Laurie Sharp we have Mia we have Kaya Katus we have Alexis Ramirez so the only Belizean left in this um, two of our Belizean riders have, separate, have been separated there's no I don't see any Gabby Gabriel anymore no um, um, Natalie Lovell it's the four the five Elizabeth riders and the four riders from Williams Racing on the front number three Regina Dotty yes number three Regina Dotty on the front we had white helmet riding a cannon wheel racing bike it's Regina Dotty on the front folks again we want to um, put our hand together again and remember remember our two fallen brothers Kadim Banks and Edison Osha Tragically died mm. exactly two years ago. So we are here with nine ladies, nine ladies, five Elias Sweats riders, and four riders from Williams Racing as we make our way along the George Price Highway heading towards Unitedville I hope that the, uh, the audio is good, I hope the audio is good so um, yes, nine young ladies, Roger just checks if the audio is good Roger stealing that prize number 11 again taking that prize Juling Aguela taking that station prize and the pace again Laurie Sharp Laurie Sharp out of Jamaica rides for Williams racing team and the front driving the pace doing some 20 miles an hour up this little incline I think this is one called Three Sisters the backside of Mount Cope she's been marked by her teammate Alexis Ramirez out of Trinidad and Tobago Trinidad and Tobago produce a lot of um, great cyclists track their, their world champion in a track event but there's Miss um, Alex, uh, Alexis Ramirez looking smooth looking good she wears the national colors of Trinidad and Tobago so I guess she's the, the champion the national champion of Trinidad and Tobago she's been marked by Miss um, Regina Dotti Yes. Lori Shop dancing on that pedal, yes, Lori dancing that pedal. The Jamaican being the super domestic today for her team. She marches doing some 13.4, 13.9 miles an hour, stepping up to 14 miles an hour. Yes, it's all the Jamaican rider riding for Williams Racing, making her way up this incline. Very sharp out of 
Jamaica rides for Williams Racing. Taking over the pace now is Alexis Ramirez. The Alexis Ramirez, the Trinidad, the Jordanian and um, road champion making her way. As fans cheer on the riders. This is the 33rd running of the Puma. Women cross country we want to big up Puma. We want to big up the Cycling Federation of Belize for hosting this event. And we want to big up all the people involved. A lot of work. I see Miss Let's the work all while well, the drive up. She did put in work. So kudos to all the people behind the scenes. The, we call them the volunteers who give their time and effort. And on the pace is Regina Dotti riding for the Elias Sweats driving the pace doing some 25 miles an hour we are just about to run down um, the infamous Monko so we still have a lot of racing remaining yes a lot of racing remaining in this event some 60 miles remaining about 10 miles half is under the belt but it's the Elias Sweat rider so nine riders still surviving Kaya Katus is still in the hunt Folks, we definitely see some fireworks as the day progresses. It's a bit cool today, it's a bit cool today, not that extremely hot. We make our way down Mount Hope, and here we have still driving on the front. We have Miss Dotty still driving at her, Regina, Regina Dotty driving the pace. It's up to some 36 miles as we, as we run down. Look at those, all those beautiful machines by these young ladies. As they make their way towards Belize today in the 33rd running of the Puma Women Cross Country event. Want to big up Puma, major sponsor for this race today. Nine ladies or two Belizean young ladies have disappeared uh, from this field. That's um, Natalie Lovell and young Gabby Gabriel. They try their best to stay with these women, but most of these women are top notch. So, kudos to those young ladies for signing up. And folks, I must tell you that um, it's tough to get. Um, if we if we may have a female cross country, we had uh, we didn't invite any foreigners. We only have three young ladies lining up, so it won't really be a race. So, um, the cycling federation and the sponsor have decided to bring in foreign riders. So it looks like from here onwards, the women cross country will be a foreign uh, foreign competition race where ladies will come to our shows and take part in this event. Definitely a beautiful event attracting international riders and all that good for tourism because they tell, Belize, they tell people about Belize and we'll have more um, foreign riders coming to our show, spending their dollars, you know, and telling their family and friends where they come from, how beautiful Belize is. So that's a good gesture. What is number 14? Joyce Morton on the front, taking over the uh, the pace now is Julian, followed by Alexis Ramirez, and it's, uh, the front is controlled by the Williams Cycling Team. Yes, the station prize again. Watch out, this young lady, she pick up a lot of prize. Julian pick up a lot of prize, and it's all Williams racing on the front. The four riders at the front controlling the pace. Followed by the five, um, the five Elias Red riders, which include our very own Kaya Katus, and you can see Elizabeth St um, Stevenson chewing away at a bar or something, making sure she keeps top up. But it's Alexis Ramirez and the PS looking smooth. Where's number 12? She rides for Williams Racing. She hails from Trinidad and Tobago. Big up Trinidad and Tobago in the house. There's a Jamaican rider, so a whole fleet of international riders. We have riders from Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Mexico, USA, and Belize in this event today. Yes, look at the face of um, Julian. Look very smooth, concentrated. There's no sign of suffering. All these ladies have on their game face as we make our way towards just past through Blackman Eddy. We're heading towards um, Antaro Village and it's the Jamaican rider Laurie Sharp on the pace race number 13. The lucky number of number 13, Alexis Sharp driving the pace doing some 29 miles an hour. That's a garment. He's saying I have this garment and this garment 
you know, I never tell a lie. It comes straight from the satellite. Yes. Lori Sharp, the Jamaican rider, and that beautiful S Works machine as she makes her way. Oh, it's a black man Eddie, actually, black man Eddie. We are in black man Eddie. There's a sign, black man Eddie, and Lori, Lori Sharp just pick up that station prize. She pulls off the pace. Here comes her teammate. It's going to be, turn out to be a nice race. It's going to be a sweet race. I, I'm really looking at it. I'm already gone forward to mile 30 and see what's happening. This is going to be a tight race. Both, both teams are feeling out each other as well. Like they said, uh, they said they are ridden internationally with each other already. So these riders know more or less who, 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 who is who. So they are just waiting out to see what will happen. But um, some attacks will come and um, our only hope is Kaya Katus now. And so Kaya will have to put herself in a position where she, and these riders, that, most of them are, maybe they're, they're on a pro level as well, so they, they, the pro level ride different from how Belizean ride and how we are riding, looking back and black the back and it, no, they didn't they, they know black the back, can you notice, you see a sweat get rid of snow with a, uh, William racing at 20 side to rotate and things, Belize man and that, so. What will happen, what, what Kaya will have to look for Kaya Ka is riding defensive and she's riding at the end of the of the peloton of this ten or, or nine woman field. Her, her problem will have to be her problem will be that if two sweats make a move or two will make a move and a, and a sweat go and they start to rotate, she will find herself in a predicament where she end up to the back and then those girls won't help her and then she will. So she, I think she has to ride. It, well, she's right. The race is just right, it just started and. They are riding smoother, but when the attack starts, Kai will have to be riding more in the front and more, more aggressive around her team so that her team keeps her protected through the race. Uh, definitely, Palace. Uh, Miss the, the LAS Sweats team have been the, the more defensive of, of, of the two teams up here. Uh, but at this present time now, LAS Sweats has stepped on the, fr on the front. Um, we see that the Williams team is riding with making sure that the PSD is steady and high, Dave. The idea is if we keep the PS steady and high, we will burn them and burn the legs. Yeah, so basically what they're doing uh, by lifting the PS is that um, what you do in that case is that you do that in order to make the other team come out and ride. Uh, when you have good sprinters and and a team, you want to make sure that the sprinter have to work and use up the legs. So when the finish line come, if you're not if you're not able to beat her on the sprint, at least you'll um, make your chances much more of, of you know capitalizing on the end. But if you notice the Jamaican girl, I'm watching her. She, right now, she seems to be the strongest rider in this group. It, it's showing in terms whenever she go on the pace and how she's lifting and she's riding with a lot of confidence. And like, like Palace was, was saying earlier, I think that the LA Sweat team is showing a little bit too much respect for them. But is it respect or they just can't? Well, it could be a strategy also because it's like a chess match. You don't want to show your strength early so you can be just back there just playing, you know. But also it's a mental thing also because then you're making that a team. The more you're putting them on the front, the more confident they get, believing that, you know, that they are the better team. You don't want to do that because when the race gets late, they will capitalize on that. So you, whenever they go and match the pace, you, you want to go back, like back and forth. You want to have a rider that will be there matching them back and forth rather than just sitting. Um, can you judge um, the pace right now? The pace is, is, is pretty high right now, Laurie Sharp. The Jamaican from Williams uh, cycling team is on the PS. Lori Sharp, we must say, um, she seems to be like our Marie Sharp Pepper. She the bonne. She is on the front burn. Um, we we have heard that um, Lori's father is following this race very keenly in Jamaica, and he has the the, the, the Jamaicans up early this morning uh, watching the race. Uh, folks, we must say. 
that th th this is, is bad that we've lost two of our three Belizeans. However, Kaya is riding very smart in that she's trying to conserve as much as she can. Um, her team is not too aggressive. When the pace gets too high, uh, one of her teammates will come on the front like now to try and bring it down Palace. That is trying to save her legs as we would say, right? Well, uh, yeah, it can be too. But, um, I'm sure that Kaya will, will be talking to them and telling them how she's feeling and that, that will have them know what, what they have to do, basically. So if you feel, if Kai is not feeling good, I'm sure Elias Swett will go on the pace and keep no high pace because then that, that, will, that will cause Kaya to punish more as well. And so it will be a factor where the other team with them team will have to punish Kaya more than her Elias Swett team personally. So. Okay, I just want to give a quick view into the station prizes. Because remember, we always need to give thanks for those because that kind of pick up the pace of the race. So that first prize at Public Works Department was won by Natalie Lovell. The second one, CS Energy Santa Elena, Loma Luz Boulevard. Natalie Lovell again. Unfortunately, she was left behind. And then this third prize in front of Cayo Cargo, Julin Aguila. Julin, that's J-U-L-Y-N, Aguila. You want to run too quickly? While we're here, the list of prizes, can I hear those? Prizes. Prizes? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, we will let Karen run through that again, but folks, we must inform you, this is the 33rd running of the annual Women Cross Country, brought to you by Puma, Puma Energy. Puma Energy is the main sponsor of this race. Uh, Puma is, as we would say, fueling this big event, the 33rd running of the annual female uh, cross country. Um, at this time, Karen will give you all um, the station prizes and where they are. Uh, we must let you know before we go to Karen that there's nine riders. Let's let just tell the folks quickly where we are, where we are at before we, we Karen can tell with that. We're going into Warrior Head Bridge area, so that we'll, they'll be heading into Tiketi Village, some 53, 54 miles away from the city. Wow, already, so, right? So let me just run through the first 11 station prizes. Three was one. The fourth one is um, a Kesa Carib Brute. Oh, a one Kesa Carib Bear, Joan Garbat, Central Farm Agricultural Station, 215 cash and a gift package. Um, Central Bank of Belize, Hello's Body. And then in front of Galen, we don't have a winner yet, but I'm just telling you. Um, there's a perfume set donated by Lee Bit Estates. Lee Bit Estates. <laughs> um, Mountain Pine Ridge Junction. Uh, that was back when we were going to give you names later. K and K Lumber, hundred dollars in cash. Top of the hill in front of Bosman Arnold, hundred in cash. Omar's Diner. Top of Go Slow, hundred in cash. Uh, Wallens Hardware. And uh, guys, folks listening out, listening out there. Um, Station prizes are quite lucrative. You could literally come off a, um, with a thousand dollars worth of station prize. So, and it speeds up the race. But the winner that comes in, the person that crosses the line first, wins three thousand dollars in cash, garland, more cash, more cash, champagne, gift basket, two gift baskets. So, for right now, they're all back together. Um, I wanted to mention something that you and I spoke about, Palace. We spoke about weight. That one of the girls were kind of thick. We said thick in Belize. And so I'm thinking, yeah, if you're thicker, you maybe have more muscle, maybe you could push longer. But you're also heavier, right, Dave? Yes, but also in cycling, they have what you call a strength to weight ratio. So if you can manage your weight and carry your weight with your strength, then it's fine. So that's why you see uh, one of the girls riding for Elise, which she looks much thicker than the other riders, but it seems that she's very strong also. It reminds me of Marlon in his yes, days. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. We so used to think that if a rider is big, you're not fast. That is yeah, not true. Not true. <laughs> you, you got so, a lot of yeah. quick twitch muscle. Yeah. 
Okay, so doing some 20 miles an hour. Here comes her teammate. Yes, here comes her teammate. They have decided to pick up the pace. They've been marked by Regina Dotti from LA Sweats. There is um, Laurie Sharp. And it's, it's a four of uh, four. The only person in between is Regina, but it's all um, riders from the Williams Racing driving the pace. Yes, young number 11, Julian Aguela driving the pace. Taking over this now is Regina Dotti, and there's a Jamaican rider right on her wheel. So Re Regina, and then there goes. There's another. I can see that there's an attack. Yes, there's an attack, and an attack by um by Julian. Julian on the attack. She's been marked by Regina. Yes, Julian wears number 11. She looks very strong and powerful. She have collected most of the station prize so far, so she's looking good. The Williams Racing is really looking good, and marking them is the elevated rider. Here goes young Laurie Sharp. Laurie Sharp, the Jamaican, and the pace, stepping up the pace to some 30 miles an hour, folks. I haven't seen this. These girls are doing some 30 miles an hour. Here comes um, Joyce Morton, number 14, as you drive it, as we are in the village of Tea Kettle. The pace have definitely picked up. The pace have definitely been picked up. We are going over some bumps here as the fans wave on the girls. Yes, the pace have been picked up. And these girls said, we are not playing today. We are going to ride. We are going to enjoy the country of Belize, the tarmac. And they are communicating. They are paying keen attention. All nine ladies are still in the pack still in the hunt as we see Alexis Ramirez the champion of Trinidad and Tobago rides for Williams um, racing team on the front and here goes again the ever dangerous Julian Julian sprinting for that station prize she's grabbing up all the prize she looks very dangerous folks Julian Aguela looking very dangerous as she picks up another prize mm -hmm. It's a little doggy on the road and she's been marked by the young um, Mia, Mia Scarletta. Mia rides for Elias Sweats on the wheel of Julian. And a small gap, a small gap, just a few bike lengths of small gap have been opened up. Two ladies, one from Williams Racing and one from Elias Sweats. And <laughs> she refused to pass them, um, Julian as the free wheel and the pack will make it back and she's marking her she won't let her go as we head towards we are in the village of Kikettle heading towards Kamalot Kamalote next and out of the cell again out of the cell of this incline it's Julian and she stepped up pace she's again marked by by young Mia Mia on a high cadence and immediately on the wheel Mia immediately on the wheel of Julian. Here, here goes Alexis. Here goes Alexis. Here goes Alexis Ramirez. Alexis Ramirez seeing a little gap. And Alexis Ramirez, like I mentioned to you, she looks very dangerous. The champion of Trinidad and Tobago. Alexis Ramirez looking good. We're passing through Tea Kettle Village, folks. And uh, it's Elizabeth Stevenson marking Alexis Ramirez. There's a Jamaican rider, Laurie Sharp. All of them look very concentrated. They are paying keen attention, folks. A lot more racing remaining this day. A lot of excitement still on the tarmac. Let us see if this will go down to a sprint or we'll have a solo winner. Prize was picked up there. And on the front, we have the Jamaican rider, Laurie Sharp, in that black kit. I'm not sure if she's a champion of um, Jamaica, but I almost believe so. But Alexis, I mean, um, Laurie Sharp and the PS sitting is her teammate, the ever dangerous Julian Aguela. So all nine ladies are still here, all nine ladies are still in this event. As we make our way towards Kamal, um, Kamalote. I hope the audio is still good, folks. I hope the audio is good. And it's the Jamaican rider, the Jamaican rider. We call this old man hill. A little incline. You really don't see it, but it definitely hurt the legs as the Jamaican rider, Laurie Sharp, put in some mad pace. A small gap has been opened up. She's doing some 20 miles an hour up this little incline. I think she ride faster than some of our Belizean males. Yes, she driving it doing some 20 miles an hour number 13 you're looking number 13 
the Jamaican writer Laurie Sharp putting in some pain we can see um, Elizabeth Stevenson trying to cross over the Eliezer rider trying to cross over to the lone lead rider the Jamaican looking smooth and here comes the um, Eliezer rider Elizabeth Stevenson and she make contact with the lead rider so it's two riders up front a small gap a small gap to the, the next um, seven riders so two riders up front Lori Sharp and Elizabeth Stevenson I hope I have that name correct let me see number it's number six Yes, number six is um, number six is um, Elizabeth Stevenson's. She have been um, two riders open a, a little gap, and the uh, the field of riders, seven riders, all teammates. So two different teams representing in the front, Elias Sweats and Williams cycling racing team. We are approaching the village of Kam Kamalote and you see two riders as uh, seems that Elizabeth is feeling good she's on the pace she's driving doing some 20 miles an hour as fans uh, cheer her on you can see the Belizean flag and you see two riders up front Elizabeth Stevenson a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic. Anyway, of these young ladies, they have to get in traffic out. They have to get these cars out. This, uh, there's a station prize, I believe. There's a station prize there. And we can see Elizabeth driving number six, followed by number 13, Laurie Sharp. As we head towards um, Kamalote, the two riders have opened up a sizable gap. Yes, they have opened a sizable gap. They are doing some 22 miles, 22.5 miles on a watt. As we head in the village of Kamalote, we are heading towards Belmopan shortly. We will be in Belmont, um, in Rolling Creek, so we have some 50 odd miles still remaining in this beautiful event. We knocked down about um, 20 miles so far, so we still have some 50 miles, a lot of racing, a lot of suffering left in this event. But here we got number 6 and number 13, the Jamaican rider out of California riding for Williams Racing Cycling Team, Laurie Sharp and the LA Sweat rider. Elizabeth Stevenson out front, a sizable gap. They have extended their lead. They have extended their lead. We don't have um, a time gap, but they have extended their lead. And it's two riders making their way here on the tarmac. Folks want to big up Puma. This is the 33rd running of the Puma Women Cross Country event held here today, the 24th of March 2024. Folks, one week. That's all, that's all, just six days away from the Holy Saturday Cross Country Race, the massive event. This morning when we come up, let me say we don't have over 100 station prizes, so no one had about station prizes. It's getting crazy, and I know people during the week one still want to add more station prizes, so I don't know if that's a possibility. It will be, it will be a, um, it's been crazy for the officials to get prizes after prizes today. As The national champion of Jamaica riding for the Williams cycling team. Those are two ladies up front, followed by seven other riders. Those seven riders are looking at each other. Nobody wants to, to, to make up a, a chase because one is from each team, Dave. Yeah, this is going to get very interesting um, because the two teams have a rider up front, so I don't know if any of them is permitted to chase. Uh, <laughs> which is <laughs> going to be very weird, but um, yeah, I, I was I was like I was saying earlier, the Jamaican uh, shown that she was she is one of the strongest rider in the peloton, but also the young lady from LA Sweat also what's her name Stevenson yeah she also yeah she also showing um the and the way the two are rotating uh, is rotating the pace on the front it don't look like there no one is sitting on no one's wheel so um. Yeah, this will be a long day for the riders chasing right now. Let, let us see. Let us see how this black the back up there now. <laughs> it's, it's a sweet drink though. <laughs> I want to see how. Thirty-two seconds to two, the time two, is two the time. Two riders yeah. in the front have have a rider from Williams or a rider from 
Yeah, and they said, make a service back when we roll now. Can't control the whole wheel roll. <laughs> we like about five miles right now. Black <laughs> Mamba, come <laughs> big. But, <laughs> but Palace, Palace, um, the way we would do it as you have just informed everybody, but, but the real way and the best way to do it would be that they don't chase them, these two girls down, but they keep it within a reasonable distance exactly. Exactly. that in the event that something happens to one of their, to, to their teammates, it's not a big crazy chase to try and chase down, right, Dale? That would be... Yeah, but, but what's that now? I, I don't know if I don't miss mo make, make more sense, though. Elias Sweat have the rider, the rider front, the, the run, the bone energy. And uh, Elias Sweat the back, the bone energy that chase her down. Who do you think no, 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 no. come out that it's good, good? No, no, I'm saying that we have uh, Elias Sweat. You see, they said if, if they were thinking like, like, like that to win the race, then you would have the other team also cooperate with her, but apparently it's only Elias Sweat that is doing the, the chase in the back. Am I correct? Right, well, right now, the, 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 the two riders from Elias Sweats are on the PS driving it with one rider from, from I mean, two riders from, cy uh, from Williams Cycling, number 11 and number 12, are driving and bringing one rider from uh, Elias Sweats. So there, here we go again. They, they are, are trying to, to even destroy this back road. Right. The, um, the, 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 the reason for that is uh, if you have a rider up front, that you know is not uh, the fastest finisher. You always want to make sure your sprinter is in the break. So at the finish line, you give yourself the best chance. And maybe that's why, uh, if you notice, the girls them in the back are chasing. Because if they have the fear that maybe the rider up front is not the fastest rider, then they want to keep the uh, distance pretty close and try to bridge it uh, to the finish in order to give themselves a good chance. Um, Kaya is uh, known as a good finisher, so that's why you notice the two girls on the front, especially uh, the Williams racing, they will try their best to keep Kaya away and keep her away from coming to the finish line. Uh, definitely, Dave. So two riders up front, folks, on the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country Classic, sponsored by Puma, Puma Energy, the energy that drives this, the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country. Miss Lori Sharp is riding for the Williams cycling team. Uh, she's a Jamaican. And Elizabeth Stevenson is the rider from LA Sweats, an American. So I, two riders I, I up ready, front. And when Elizabeth guys do it both like me, I like to win big people the road things, and then I like that. So just to recap, guys, um, it was we're, 11. We're quick village, heading to quick village quickly. <laughs> Karen. Roaring Creek. Oh, okay. they're, they're in Roaring Creek for people who are just tuning in, there are only nine riders remaining. Two, unfortunately, were Lena Creole. Eleven, Eleven riders started. Nine together. Nine together and two there's some way out there. Yeah. yeah. So and that's Gabby and Natalie, right? Coming up in, in case you're wondering what happened. But I wanted to say what I observe is that most of these cyclists are basically in their twenties and the eldest of course is Kaya. Mm -hmm with most of them being between 22 and, and 27. Um, Dave and I were discussing just now, Lori, based on what we Googled, is a accomplished triathlete. She started well, I guess 14, 15, and she's doing well, so it's paying off. Um, this is the 32nd running of this race. 33rd, sorry, oh, 32 on three, you see? 33rd running of the race, and Brenda Aguayo held the record way back on Monday, May 12th in 2003. She rode it in three hours, seven minutes, and 29 seconds palace. And when you tell the listening public why you think this record won't be broken? The, uh, the, the record can't be broken. I, I want to say I ever broken because when I calculate, when I calculate when Ryan Barman, when he crossed it and set the record at 540, Ryan Barman, yeah. No, no, yeah, you can calculate. Nobody, nobody right for a guy to believe the second half of cross country in a Brenda time. So, so, it, that, that, that's so you think difficult. she's just a little beast? She was yeah, just oh, a little beast back then. She, she was a different, <laughs> she was a different, different category. No, she was different. <laughs> so, guys, there are a lot of prizes to be won station prizes and everything in between. Actually, there are 47 station prizes in all. Four seven, 
So remember where I tell you, Dave, is that you could come up good, good, the win loan station prize. So that one out of them two, they gather up everything. Yeah, that's va that's vacation money. Um, but like I said, boat riders uh, have the team in the back, so that money will probably be shared, uh, and the prizes will, will be shared amongst the other riders. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> Definitely, folks. Two riders up front, uh, Miss Stevenson and Miss Sharp. Those are the two riders up front being chased by seven riders. Um, folks, we are just at the roundabout of the Belmopan uh, Junction. That's where we are, folks. Uh, two riders up front, two riders up front. Miss um, Lori Sharp riding for Williams Cycling and Miss Elizabeth Stevenson riding for LA Sweats. Those are the two riders up front in the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic, brought to you by Puma, Puma Energy. The energy that is powering the 33rd Women's Cross Country Cycling Classics. Folks, we also want to say thanks to the Santa Elena San Ignacio Town Board, the Belize City Council, and to Digi for powering up this broadcast. Uh, folks, two riders, two riders up front. We are about to go back to Mr. Andrew Ardonis, who is right next to those riders to bring you the pedal by pedal. The and Jamaican rider is asking Mr. Andrew oh, Ardonis to give us a wind Yeah, she is she's eating some kind of, um, that look like a, um, a lemon tart. Yes, a lemon tart at the peak. The Jamaican rider eating a lemon tart uh, and boat riders are definitely um, eating away and making sure that they stay top up but Jamaican rider Lori Sharp looking good wears the lucky number 13 as we make our way up this little incline we are heading towards the uh, Hector Silva uh, ER strip and then we go into open plains we head towards um, the village of Cotton Tree but it's still the two ladies out front. I hope the audio is still good, folks. I hope the audio is still good. If they have any issue with the audio, please let Mr. Banks know so he could report to me. And we're going up this little incline, and it's Elizabeth Stevenson and the Pierce, followed by Laurie Sharp. And way in the distance, we can see the riders so or they're not too far, it's only about, uh, I would say about 20, 25 seconds. That's about the gap these riders have on the field at the back. So, in a short while, if I see anyone, I'll make. So, we're just in front of the two lead riders, just in front of the two lead riders. Yeah, continue for check on the audio banks. We are here with the two lead riders, the, the two lead riders, Laurie Sharp. And there's a station prize. 45 seconds, 45 seconds, there's a station prize. There's a station prize coming up. And yeah, yes, man, we believe the way of the station prize and Laurie. Lori Sharp will take that prize. Lori Sharp will take that prize here at the airstrip. As we make our way towards Belize City, we can see fans out at the art box. And we see the crew servicing the riders. Everything alright? Yes, folks, this is the 33rd running of the Puma Women Cross Country Cycling Classic held here today, Sunday, the 24th of March, 2024. We want to big up Puma. We want to big up the Cycling Federation of Belize for hosting this event. We can see on the front, Elizabeth Stevenson, along with um, Laurie Sharp getting service. Yes, Laurie getting her service. These two young ladies have decided to work together. The gap. The official said the gap was 45 seconds, 45 seconds was the gap.
far the five second was the gap and two riders up front a jamaican rider and a u.s rider two different team elias sweats and williams racing as we make our way yeah yes that's my cause that's my cause tracy there's duck and uh, elizabeth taking a pouch water shipping on her back it's although the day kind of bit overcast it's still hot here on the tarmac for riders as these ladies have completed some 20 miles 20 plus miles so we still have a lot of racing remaining in this event we head towards the village of country shortly but it's two riders out front El elizabeth stevenson and laurie sharp laurie sharp tune away at that um she's sucking on a gel or something i'm trying to see what she's sucking down she's sucking down something some special something and the Jamaican rider, Laurie Sharp, looking good, looking smooth as we head towards uh, Kikiwitz here on the Judge Price Highway. We are doing some 24.7 miles an hour. Two young ladies out from two different teams, Williams Racing and Elias Sweats. Yes, as we make our way in the 33rd running of the women, the Puma women cross country race today. 11 ladies started earlier this morning inside Nassau. We head towards Belize some 70 miles later. This race will come to its conclusion at the Digi Park. So we ask fans to go out, support the young ladies and cheer on your riders. We know our two other Belizean riders have been dropped earlier. That's uh, Gabby Gabriel and, and um, Miss Natalie, Mrs. Natalie Lovell, um, who braved out and came out to take part. But they are facing some big fish out here. These girls are um, almost like pro riders. Yeah, the rally, flat of the males in Belize. This young Laurie Sharp, the Jamaican rider, and the front wheels are looking number 13, number 6. Elizabeth Stevenson as they make their way up this little incline at mile 40. I think it's like mile 49. See, you can see the, the mile post. We are here on the Judge Price Highway in the third, the third running of the Puma Women Cross Country Cycling Classic held here today. Sunday the 24th a beautiful day here in the country of Belize and Jewel of Belize and folks the, the game is over here comes the field of riders and it's been led by Regina let me see now by Mia 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 Scarlet Scarletto bringing back and so folks it's one big event and here immediately seems that um Alexis Ramirez wanted to attack um, she's looking to pass Mia and they had some kind of conversation <laughs> folks it's Mia on the front and we can see Alexis Ramirez the champion of Trinidad and Tobago so folks they're all back together all nine riders are back together it's one new event all nine riders are back together as we make our way up this little incline as we head into the village of Cotton Tree this is the 23rd running of the Puma women cross country event held here today March 24th, 2024. Like I said, there's a few days away from the massive event, the annual haul, a Saturday cross country race coming up on Saturday for folks. This highway will be light up with fans, light up with excitement. Like I said this morning, let's say they don't have over 100 station prizes, and I don't know if they could take on any more station prizes. I will know people are calling, I want to give station prizes last month, but it's a tough job so for, um, to, to have those. Um, Officials trying to pick up all these prizes today as we speak these ladies are picking up some five to six station prizes here on the tarmac and it's one The race is back together. It's back together Dancing on the front Alexis Ramirez riding for Williams racing team on the front they have come to a lull as we make our way up this little incline and we can see all the service vehicle at the back I want to pick up my driver Mr. Wilbert Banks and all you fans tuning in wherever you are in Belize over the Caribbean in the US wherever you are over the world Welcome to Cycling Belize. Yes, we are passing mile 45, mile 45 here on the Judge Price Highway. Yes, folks, we're back. 
um, we must say that all nine riders are back together, guys. Um, on, the, on the pace is the Jamaica, Miss Lori Sharp, riding for William Cycling Team. Dave, uh, let, uh, let's discuss what, what we have seen just happen. Two riders are out front, one from each team, but all of a sudden now we're back to nine together. W what's the idea? What happened? Well, back to, back to eight. Yeah, back, back. Yeah, so uh, like I was saying earlier, um, the strategy um, for the Williams team is to force the LA, LA Sweat team to ride. So you make them use up a lot of energy. Like I said, we know that Kaya is a very good finisher. And what we're trying to do is to put, uh, put the pressure on her and force her to ride to, uh, to make their chance greater at the finish line. So that's what we were watching right there. Um, like I said, the the, um, the LA Sweat, uh, what's what's her number? Stevenson. Stevenson um, she seems very strong. Um, we noticed in the uh, breakaway just now, uh, the sh her pace looked a little bit higher uh, than the Jamaican uh, Sharp. So um, yeah, beautiful race. Yeah, folks, uh, we must say this is the 33rd running of the annual Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic brought to you by Puma. Puma, the energy of Belize that makes this the 33rd Women's Cross Country Cycling event happening today. Uh, folks, nine riders. We started off with 11. Uh, Fitzgerald, we have down to nine. We've lost uh, Miss Gabby Gabriel from G Flow and Miss Natalie Lovell from uh, Lovell's, Lovell Cycling Team. Um, those two riders are still coming. Uh, hopefully, I would hope that for, for both of them that they have joined and, and can rotate and try and make a finish of this, the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country Classic. There's also a prize for the last place or so. I don't know if I break thing going on when I get in up on Boulevard. Right? Then people come in have breaks or hundred. Uh, well, <laughs> we 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 won't uh, go to that event. Uh, hopefully, those those two women will make it in in a good time. Um, I know this is a hard race, Dave. A very uh, tough race. Uh, we've seen these riders put out quite a bit. They have been at it for about an hour and ten minutes or so. So we're almost um, two thirds, or yeah, about one third, about one third going into a half of the race down. So uh, still quite a ways to go. Yeah, I noticed also um, when the two riders get caught, if you notice the race went a little bit slow, it's because the riders, they were uh, fueling, they was getting the flow in, eating, you know, uh, so that they can keep that energy level. So you probably see five to six miles when it's going to be like a very like steady, steady slow, and then it's going to pick up back. Uh, definitely. Uh, Miss Karen, w w did, can you give us an update if we have any on the station prizes? Hi, good morning, folks, again. Um, we started out a little bit after 8, like 8.05, so it's about an hour and change into our 10 minutes. I into the race, so it's quite long. Okay, so station prizes. Um, let me just repeat the earlier ones because remember I told you that station prizes are important because they kind of speed up the pace a bit plus. We have to give thanks to the people that are giving. So back to this, we have the first two station prizes were won by Natalie Lovell, then it was Julian Aguila um, in front of Kayo and then Julian Aguila again at the Joan Garbat softball field and then station prize number five. That was at Belize Central Forum. We had, um, I think it was, yeah, Julian Aguila that took all of those 11, number 11, Two prizes, five through eight, which was um, $250 cash central bank, gift package, hello body, one perfume set, donated by Libita Everything, Libita States, $100 at the junction, K and K Lumber. Um, then we switch at top of the hill, um, Bosman Arnold restaurant, 
um, was won by number 13, that was, that's Lori Sharp, the Jamaican. Again, um, Tapa Go Slow was that is Regina Dotti. So they, they've been kind of sharing. And then station prize number 11 was won again by Julian Aguilar. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. And for right now, that's what we have, folks. Uh, again, this is the 33rd annual Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic. Started all the way in Columbus Park, San Ignacio. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes, more or less. We had 11 riders starting. Two fell victim to the pace and we have nine left, the entire LA Sweat team and the entire Williams Racing cycling team. So, Palas, who will it be? Yeah, um, it, it came up and it, it shows me that these girls um, ride far differently from the way we ride the ladies. And you guys need to know block the block, because they first two again, I don't they want three, four minutes gap yep. easily if they were riding the way or we ride in Belize. So it shows that they are from a different level of competition in the United States. And so they keep the pace tight as well, even though they had a riding in front. The, the LA Sweat and William Cycling team to the back was still rotating and hence the reason why that 45 seconds came back and we are back to nine riders again. But we, we will see more of those as well because that, 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 that's just our first play. You're going to see some more plays happening through this race, and then the final execution will come as well. Yes, yes folks, this is the third, third, third running, running of the, the Women's Cross Country Cycling, Cycling Classic, Classic, brought to you by, by Puma. Puma, Puma Energy. The energy that powers the third, third running of the Women's Cross Country Classic. Classic. Folks, we also want to say thanks to San Ignacio, Santa Elena Town Board, to the Belize City Council, and to Digi for their help in this event. Our uh, folks, are, in a short time, we will be heading back out as we see an attack. There's an attack uh, by one of the riders for, it seems that it's rider number, as soon as we can get that. Kaya Katu's here on the back trying to hold on as the pace has been picked up. Two riders trying to make a bid for it out front. Uh, we go back to the man on the bike, Mr. Andrew Erdones. Okay, folks, we are back, and it's number 14, Joyce Morton, and the attack being marked by Elizabeth Steve, um, Stevenson again. Yes, number 14, young, and she won that prize here in the village of Cotton Tree. It's number 14, riding for Williams Racing, young Joyce Morton, along with Elizabeth Stevenson, as they have made a break from the field. Folks, this is the 33rd running of the Puma. Women cross country hell here today, the 24th of March, 2024. These ladies are starting to turn up the heat here on the tarmac, doing some 24 miles an hour as head towards the city in a beautiful and exciting race today. Four, as we pass now, mile for the two, eight foreign riders on our turf doing their thing. It's Miss Elizabeth Stevenson on the pace, followed by Joyce Morton in the front, the Tech de la Course, the front of the race, have opened a small gap. They attack through the village of Cotton Tree. They are side by side talking to each other, sharing the pace. And young Miss Joyce picked up that prize a little while ago there in the village of Cotton Tree as we head towards mile far to one. Um, we will approach 
the uh, memorial site for our two fallen brothers there, Edison Usher and Kadim Banks. There's a prize been given there by the Banks family. I think it's a hundred dollars in memory of Kadim Banks. And there is Joyce as she opens in. Uh, let me see what she's eating. She seems like she's taking on a gel or something as a two in a way, making sure that she stays top up. I, I would like I would say in these long races you have to make sure you eat so you can survive you don't want to bunk on the bike and she has a bar or something in her hand two in a way on the front Joyce Morton on the front race number 14 rides for Williams Racing yes and uh, we can see and here comes here comes the, the race have been split up into pieces here comes number 11 number 11 Jul Julian Ju Julian Aguilar have caught up along with um, this is um, Regina Dotty Regina Dotty so two LA Sweat riders and we have three riders from from um, here comes Alexis yes Alexis have come across Alexis Ramirez the Trinidadian rider as they make their way towards mile 41 here on the Judge Price Highway and the front number 6 riding for Elias Sweats this is Steven Singh, she pulls off, taking over the paces. Is Miss Aguela. She's asking for help. We have five ladies, five ladies, two Elias Sweats, and three Williams Racing. We have Alexis Ramirez, race number 12, for Williams Racing, as the pace have been picked up to some 21 miles an hour. Alexis on the front driving the pace, followed by Julian. Julian um, Aguela. Hope I pronounce him properly. And we have number three, Regina Dotti, rides for Elias Sweats. And we can see riders coming across. We can see the Jamaican rider along with Kayaka Tools. And I think Mia coming across. So they are all trying to make it back. And here comes um, Laurie Sharp being marked by Kayaka Tools as they make their way back. Here comes young Mia making her way back. So it's all back together again. The nine riders and the pace is up to some 26 miles an hour. Look at the face of Kayaka Tools. Kayaka Tools hanging on, trying to stay on the wheel of these ladies as they start to turn it up and tarmac. There's Kayaka Tools. There's young Mia as they make contact with the lead riders. Drive it on the front is number 11. Julian. Middle the Jamaican rider Laurie Sharp on the front. And these young ladies, honestly, I can see the meter is saying some 29 miles an hour. Yes, 29 miles an hour as they drive the pace hard. 29 miles an hour. This young lady, Laurie Sharp out of Jamaica. And there's an attack again. There's an attack by number 11, Julian Aguela. She did mark by number 3, Regina Dotty and the wheel of Julian as they make their way towards mile 40 here on the Judge Spice Highway in the 33rd running of the uh, Puma Women Cross Country Classic yes we are approaching mile 40 we are approaching mile 40 we just passed the, the memorial site for um, Edison Usher and Kadim Banks and two young ladies out front now, two young ladies out front, a um, rider from Williams Racing and a rider from Elias Sweats. They definitely turn up the tarmac some 26 miles an hour. Mia, I mean um, Regina Dotti, race number three and number 11 is Julian, Julian, I hope I know, Julian Aguela. I think she's a Mexican rider, riding out of California for Williams racing and they're talking to each other yes they said they will share the, 
the, the pace and the prize, they are both together speaking to each other and the gap have been opened up. A gap of about 20 seconds have been opened up and the other riders at the back attacks after attack. So these ladies are making the tarmac heat up as they unleash some series of attack on each other. Two main teams remain in Sydney. The LA cycling team and the Williams cycling team. And this young lady, very dangerous. She won a whole other station prize earlier today. Miss Julian Aguela along with Regina Dotti. The guys are ride fast, the guys are ride as fast as the male riders. Eh? So kudos to these young ladies to come out here. A nice cool day for a race and a nice cool day for these young ladies. Early in the week it was very hot, but today the weather is beautiful for racing as we make our way towards the Beaver Dam Bridge. We make our way towards the Beaver Dam Bridge here and uh, George Spice Highway. So we're approaching mile um, I believe mile 39 and we are here with the two lead riders in the 33rd running of the Puma women cross country race folks we still have a lot of racing remaining so remember if you want to go and uh, see the finishing start to get everything together make sure the food ready get the kids dressed and head out to the digi park to see the exciting conclusion of this event the 33rd running of the Puma women cross country event I want to big up the cycling federation of Belize for putting together and hosting this event. I want to big up Puma for sponsoring this event and all the, um, the, the people that gave station prizes along the route will definitely call their names after the race is um, finished. I think they put it up on the screen so you can see the prizes. But we're here with the two lead riders, Regina Dotti and Julian Aguela, number six and number 11, as they continue to turn up the pressure doing some 20 plus miles an hour up this incline here as we pass, just pass over the Beaver Dam Bridge. Two ladies sharing the pace, not staying on the pace too long. Here goes, um, she's taking a drink of water, pouring the water over herself, trying to keep that body core cool. The Mexican rider, number 11, dangerous rider. I look at her earlier and She's very dangerous. I hope the audio is still good. So, Raj, if the audio is still good, please tell Mr. Bang so tell somebody to. If you have any issue with the audio, let me know. But we are beside the two lead riders as they drive it some 26 miles an hour on the front. Julian Aguela. Taking over the pace, Regina Dotti. And LA Sweat Rider and a Williams racing cycling team rider making their way towards mile 39 here on the George Price Highway in the 33rd running of the Puma women cross country cycling event yes we wish to have more young ladies that the highway could be much more exciting I know the whole such a cross country race coming up will definitely be a blast and fans will be out by thousands tuning in by the thousands for this monster event coming up and Saturday, today is the ladies' turn as the two young ladies up front, Regina Dotti and Julian Aguela, number 11 and number 3. They're doing some 24 miles an hour as we head towards um, the Frank Elde village. approaching the halfway point of this event so 70 miles or so halfway to be like 35 so we somewhere around mile 38 in the next um, few miles we'll have completed half the distance so we still have half more of entertainment of cycling here on the Dodge Price Highway in the 33rd running of the Puma women's cross-country cycling classic I know a lot of people are tuning in Belize over the Caribbean over the USA and all over the world we have some international riders in the country competing. We are having a new champion. The defending champion is not here. She probably probably might looking at and she's in the uh, in Bermuda. That's Caitlin. 
Caitlin Connors, she won last year. She probably tuning in. Big up the crew from Bar uh, for Bermuda. Wish you were here, Caitlin, to defend your title. But I understand you have retired from cycling. But we are here with the two lead riders, Julian Aguela and Regina Dotti. No signs of suffering. They are both looking good. They are both looking good as they continue to drive some 24 miles an hour. We head towards the cutoff at the uh, at the Frank Edits Farm. The entrance to Frank Edits Farm. Two young ladies with uh, scars on the elbow of Regina Sugar. She have hit the pavement um, prior to coming to Belize. She's still a heel. Regina um, and the pace running at Cannondale machine from the LA Sweats. I know the whole LA Sweats crew is tuning in, cheering on their riders, and especially to you know the Williams and the whole um, legions of Los Angeles, the um, Miami Blazers, and all the team that are associated with the Williams family are tuning in. Looking at this event, seeing the young ladies out here doing their thing, but this Mexican girl here, young lady, very powerful, very strong, Julian Aguela, along with Regina Dotti from the Elias Sweats, we number three, doing their thing here on the tarmac as we head towards mile 38 here on the George Price Highway, just about to pass the entrance to the Frank Edis Farm village. Yes, they are sign said welcome to from Eddie's village and we're just behind the two lead riders as traffic you know the, the highway is not uh, close to traffic so we have to pull behind and allow traffic to pass through but we are here with the two lead riders looking strong looking good running to a little headwind there's a station prize and picking up the prize at mile 37 yes we are at mile 37 picking up the prize is Julian Aguila from the Williams racing team along with Regina Dotti from Elias Sweats. This is the Tech de la Course, the front of the race where the two young ladies have broken clear of the field of riders. Up at this little incline, still the two lead riders uh, here comes Mr. Kaliman Williams servicing her, his rider. There's Kaliman Williams servicing Julian Aguela, picking up her service, driving the vehicle is no other than Justin Williams, the two time cross country champion. And um, there's um, Kaliman Williams getting that ice pack to put in the jersey of Miss Julian to keep her body core cool. And there is Mr. Kaliman Williams. No stranger to cycling, knows exactly how this sport works. And we are here with the two lead riders again on the front. Julian on the front, followed by Regina Dotti as we head towards mile 36. And there is the ice box being delivered to Julian. She puts that in her back. And Regina looking back for service, Regina looking back for service, raising her hand. Regina Dotti asking for service. She cannot get service from the opposing team. So she has to wait for her uh, support team to come up. As the Williams um, team um, drop back. Let me see what's the time gap. As we head towards mile 36 here. And here comes the service crew for Regina Dotti. Here comes the service crew. Asking, let me see, she's getting a bottle. I'm not sure if water or if some kind of other stuff. But here comes um, the service crew for the LA Sweats. These guys are giving her pouch water. I'm not sure what else. She stocks that in her jersey to keep her cool. We head towards the mile 36. They are still doing some 20. Amazing, these young ladies are doing some 26 miles an hour. Yes, 30, 30, 30, 26 miles an hour. As we make our way past mile. 36 here on the, um, the um, Judge Price Highway, Kaliman Williams telling her rider they, they have to rotate, she's not supposed to be on the PS all alone as, um, as Julian telling Regina to come on the front.
Yes, we are with the Tech de la Course, the front of the race. We are two young ladies have broken clear from the field of riders. We have young, we have um, Regina Dotti rides for LA Sweats on the front, followed by Julian Aguela, the Mexican riding for Williams Racing. This is the Tech de la Course in the third, third running of the Puma Women Cross Country Cycling Classic held here today. Beautiful day here in the jewel of Belize as Easter approach and across Monamek. People will go to their favorite destination at the Keys, at the village, at the river, over the border to Mexico or wherever. And they will definitely be tuned in to the big Holy Saturday Cross Country race coming up um, this Saturday. People say on you know, the Easter start after the Holy Saturday Cross Country race. And I hope that a Belizean win, but this thing is not about Belize anymore. It's about the beauty of the race. This is Whole such a cross country race is one of the biggest races in this region and it's been held since 1928 so it has a very rich history so regardless who wins this race it's always a beautiful race i love this race from i was a kid rode a few years and now turned commentator for this beautiful event folks we are here on the judge price highway the two lead um, riders regina dotty rides for elias sweats and we're number three and julian aguela rides for Williams Racing. She wears number 11 in the 33rd running of the Puma Women Cross Country Race. No sign of suffering looking in the face of these young ladies. They seem very powerful, they seem very strong, nice high cadence. There's no sign of bobbing and weaving all over their bike. They, they look at the upper body movement, not almost steady. No sign of rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling so that you are in, in some kind of um, bother. But these young ladies definitely looking good looking strong as we approach mile 35 here on the judge price highway in the 33rd running of the puma women cross country race on the pace regina dotty dotty oh i hope that i already had dotty and there yeah, you can see the scar on the arms of regina you know cyclists always have scars cyclists is a special breed of people cycling uh, racing on the bike and uh, hitting the pavement at high speed you know you get broken bones broken shoulders we are back, we are yeah. back at the 33rd running of the women's cross-country cycling classic brought to you by puma puma energy the energy that powers the 33rd annual women's cross-country cycling classic folks we have two riders up front two riders up front with a minute and 12 seconds gap Number 11, Mexican rider riding for Williams Racing, Julian Aguia. And number three, riding for LA Sweats, Miss Regina Daddy. Those are the two riders up front with a minute and 12 seconds. Those two riders, folks, one from LA Sweats, one from Williams. Dave, what do you think? Uh, the break, uh, one, one minute, 12 seconds, uh, not, uh, there is with 30, what, 34 miles to go. Um, I feel like, uh, that's, that's not a good enough lead. Um, this race, the last 15 to 13 miles of this race will be the hardest part of this race. Um, right now, um, 112, I don't know. Definitely, uh, Dave, uh, you're not committing to anything. <laughs> Mr. Joseph, what's your commitment? I know, I know, that we don't for commitment. Commitment, commitment, fellas, uh, come on. You, you gotta check who did, I, I don't see the back corner, so who, who did chase the back there? The, where, where, as long as the black the back starts, then the break won't, won't be cut. But the back corner still will rotate and still keep things. It's our next move. We don't know the first move. It's second, it's our second move. Then, man, I don't know how much move this race I got. You look like I got plenty there. <laughs> uh, definitely, folks. Uh, we must say two riders up front. Uh, number eleven riding for the William Cycling Team, which is Miss uh, the Mexican Miss Aguia, and number three riding for Ellie Sweats, Miss Daddy. Those are the two riders up front. Uh, folks, we can tell you. They are at mile 36. Is that right, fellas? So, no, no, not Going to 35. Not past 36. If the race starts at 8.05, it's at um, 9.41. So we're at 
135, 136 so far, or 136 minutes into the race. Definitely. So, uh, so that, 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 that is halfway point. So we're looking at um, about th the, if, three. If, if you do 136 and 236, it's 312, but the race will go slow at the end. It, the race can go faster in the race. Okay, let's explain why we think the race will go slower in the last end, folks. Well, people are getting tired of it, eh? the energy will be depleted. So, um, I the, just the spin is not across country, cross country. Going is always faster than coming back. Even even if you have a, um, a, a, a headwind going in cross country in this kind of condition here, they will, the riders will ride faster to Cairo than they will ride faster coming back because the race is getting older, you're losing uh, your energy depleted and stuff. And so, as the race continues, it will, it will get a bit slower. <laughs> And then, um, and this race can do maybe, I figure you can do maybe three, three hours, 20 minutes. And then, um, which is uh, good though, because they haven't ridden so fast in a while. Okay? Definitely. Um, as, as Dave was saying too, so the, the, the closer, closer we get, get to the city, the, the, the more open fields we have and the wind gets a little more, um, a little stiffer than it's blowing right now there. So it, it, that plays a role too, Dave. Um, did, did, did you all check what was the climatic conditions morning? How was the, how was the wind. wind factor? Let me go and my occupier and check that and tell you how much mass is over the bridge. So, uh, while you do that, we'll let you know. Two riders up front, folks. Two riders up front. Uh, Miss Daddy and Miss Agia. Miss, I want to say one thing is that um, if you notice the two riders up front, uh, they're more steady in the pace and the group uh, that's chasing, if you notice, uh, the pace back there has slowed down, so that tells me that both team is kind of comfortable with the rider they have up front. So that's what we're looking at right now. Def uh, definitely, as we see now, the back, the, 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 cheers, the cheers group being led by Miss Stevenson and uh, Miss Sharp, they're just going around, but they're not putting power to the pedals, as we would say. Um, it's kind of settling down, so even though somebody jumps off the front. Um, I think, I think, like, like you, you said, said, there's not an organized chase, as we would say, Dave. It's, it's just uh, people moving around. Yeah. Uh, I think Palace will give us an update on the, the, the climatic conditions of the race. Because yeah, the temperature is at 75 degrees right now, and the wind is blowing north, nine miles an hour, which, which favors a great... Uh, they, 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 they won't be getting a lot of headwind right now, um, based with this, um, and the humidity is only at 78%, so they have good climatic conditions to ride today. So like I was saying earlier that the two riders up front, they are running a much steadier pace than the group chase. If you notice, the leader had increased to two minutes, eight seconds. So they put a little gap on the peloton. Definitely, two riders do, do, up do front. You want two, two, eight, two eight with 33 miles to go. Davido, you're still not to it? No, 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 no. I, I, the race is still, I mean, I believe the race usually ride the last leg which is that last 17 miles. Um, it's very hard, the, la the last leg, because at that time, the energy level uh, is, is far significantly. So yeah, I won't commit until mile 17. Okay, folks, as we can see in the back group here, uh, Miss Lori Sharp has made a move. Miss, Miss Lori Sharp has made a move with Kaya Katus uh, following. So, Folks, as we said, the, the, this chase group, it seems to be a attack after attack, which will allow the, the gap to grow bigger because you're going fast, slowing down fast, slowing down instead of just doing one steady pace as the front group two are. But we must say that we are here because of Puma energy, Puma energy, the energy of the 33rd Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic. At this time, we'll pass the mic over to, to Ms. Karen Rosito to give us an update if she has on the station prizes and what's left to come. Okay, so the last time, hi, good morning again. Um, the last time um, we were, I announced that we were at the Kamalote Community Center way back when, and um, Zara's boutique had donated to well, you said donated to Elizabeth Stevenson, two prizes. And then it was Lori Sharp um, at Garbutt's Puma Service Station, just to give them credit. 
Garbutt's Postman's Service Station again. Um, it was Elizabeth Stevenson, uh, three times um, the 200 cash from Team Lovell, 500 cash DFC, and um, at the Belmont Pan Air Strip, Pratt's Fried Chicken um, donated a hundred dollars gift certificate or hundred dollars worth of fried chicken to Lori Sharp. And then it was Mary Monton at Cotton Tree Community moving again um, the f at mile 41 at the monument of Kadim Bam Banks to the first female that passes, a hundred cash was won by Mary Joyce Monton again. And then at mile 37, a hundred dollars cash in the memory of Gloria Westby. That's Leticia's mom donated by Leslie and Kaylee. And that was won by Julie. Now I want to remind folks that this event was made possible by Puma Energy. And um, we're out here at the scenic Digipark enjoying um, the nice cool breeze. Pala said it was 70 something degrees. So cold weather, no? 78 is cool for cycling, and the breeze is going nine miles straight north, so that's, that's mostly in, in their box, so that will favor them a lot. They have, they don't, they don't, they don't look like they have a cross tail or a cross head, so that, that's perfect, perfect weather for cycling. So right now, we are about at mile 34, you would say? No, we come less than that. They, they, um, that's just good. That, that, that's right coming down. That's down so 32. 32. Okay, coming so to 32 Hill. Okay, so we're right there with the station prizes. I want to just remind folks out there that the person, the woman who crosses the finish line first, will win $3,000 in cash donated by Puma, along with a garland donated by Miss Sole Arguayas, $600 in cash in the memory of Rose McNabb, $500 in cash donated by Dorothy Chanona and Elswit, the families of Dorothy Chanona and Elswit Cowie, uh, one bottle of champagne donated by Loyalty Wine, a gift basket by Grace Kennedy, and another one by San Cass. Our second place winner will win $1,500 in cash donated by Puma, two fifty in cash by the families of Dorothy Chanona and Elswit Cowie, and one gift basket each from Grace Kennedy and San Cass. And if you cross the line third, $1,000 in cash donated by Puma, $150 in cash donated by the families of Dorothy Chalona and Elswit Cowie, one gift basket donated by Grace Kennedy Belize Limited, and another one donated by San Cass Limited. Now, special prize. If the first place winner is a Belizean, she will receive $5,000 cash donated by Tooth Construction Aggregate and truck, Trucking. And also, um, in the four or five category, first place, 500 cash, donated by Puma and a gift basket by Kennedy, Grace Kennedy Belize. Now, there's always a, a prize for the last person, and today there's $100 cash donated by the families of Dorothy Chanona and Elswit Cowie. So, guys, who's... Okay, so we go over now to Mr. Ordonis, live and direct. Wait, sorry. Folks, uh, just to uh, inform you that there's two, two riders trying to come across. Two riders trying to come across. Uh, number 12, the rider riding for um, Williams Racing, Alexi Ramirez, and rider number six, which would be Miss Stevenson riding for LA Sweat. So we have two chasing two with a time gap. The last time gap we had was about two minutes. So two riders trying to close down this two minutes. Our guys, Miss Stevenson uh, riding, riding for LA Sweat and Miss Ramirez riding for Williams Racing Dave. Two riders trying to close down two. What's so the two, idea? Two, so two teammates chasing two teammates? Exactly. Definitely. Okay. So when they get out there, be, they, be, they do get caught and be two or two. Co commit the man. Stop it. Okay. okay. So what I'm seeing here uh, with, with the two, leader, 
two lead riders and two chase rider. I believe right here is that if they, the two that's chasing uh, bridge that gap, it's gonna be much more difficult uh, for, for the group to catch four riders because now you have help and I figure that both teams are committed to the riders up front. I think the board is comfortable with the riders they have up front. They both feel like whoever is in that uh, lead group will be able to win it. So I figure if these uh, two guys, uh, two riders bridge this gap, then we might be looking at the uh, sprint for four. Still won't commit, Bob. Hmm. Tough. Yes, yes, folks, this, this is, is the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic, brought to you by Puma, Puma Energy, the energy of the 33rd annual Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic. Two riders up front, Miss Dolly and Miss Aguia, riding the Mexican riding for Williams Racing, and Miss Dolly riding for LA Sweats. Those are the two riders up front being chased by two other riders, uh, the rider in green for LA Sweats, Miss Stevenson, and the rider in white, Miss Alexis Ramirez, riding for William Cycling Team. Folks, we will be heading over back to the man on the, on the bike in a bit, Mr. Andrew Ardonis, who's up front with two riders leading this race as they are now approaching La Democracia, the village of La Democracia. Those are where the two riders up front are, trying to make it here to the finish line at the Digi Park in Belize City. Folks, if you want to come and see this one live, it's time to get ready. As Palace would say, time to turn off the stove and head out to see the big finish of the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic, brought to you by Puma, Puma Energy, and Puma Lubricants. Those are the big sponsors of this event. Back over to Mr. Andrew Ardonis, as he will pick up the, the race here, as these two riders are now trying to, climb, to go over the bridge, to climb up towards mile 29, heading into Past the Belize Zoo, dear. So these two riders, two riders up front, Miss Aguia and Miss Daddy. Those are the two up front. Yes, they said, and they both uh, seem to have very good pedal stroke, so that tells me that there is no one there suffering. So, um, yeah, it's going to it's gonna be a, um, it's gonna be a run uh, for the finish line. I already see it, because I don't see no one slowing down. So, uh, get ready. Come to the BTL Park, there will be fireworks. It's definitely looking like a sprint finish. Definitely. Um, we, we know that these two riders are up front, and each of them have a teammate coming on the back. The last time gap was two minutes, but I can say I, I'm pretty certain that that gap has been closed a bit, Not, uh, but still a ways to go before they, they link up as we climb up towards mile 29. The lady on the front, Miss Daddy, Miss Daddy, putting down the power, coming up towards the Belize Zoo, followed by the Mexican rider from William Cycling Team, Miss Aguia. And those are the two riders leading the 33rd running of the Puma Energy Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic. Puma Energy, the energy of this race. Folks, we must say thanks to the Belize City Council and to San Inaso Santa Elena Town Board and to Digi for putting this out to you. Folks, two riders being chased by two more. That's what we are heading towards Belize City for the big finish, for the big finish of this race in Belize City at the Digi Park. Dear Give us an idea. You said you won't commit till, till mile 17. I, I just saw um, Miss, the, Miss Ramirez in the second chase group looking back. You think she's looking for help? Uh, I don't look that way. It seems that she's trying to uh, 
bridge that gap and get to the two lead riders. Yes, folks, these two riders up front, Mr. Gia and Miss Daddy, those are the two on the pace going towards mile 28. Two riders up front being chased by two riders, Miss Stevenson and Miss Ramirez in the back trying to close down the two riders up front. Last time gap was two minutes. We can say it has been closed, but we haven't gotten an exact time gap as of late. However, two riders up front, folks. The lady in the front, in the, on the PS in green, is Miss Dottie riding for LA Sweats. The lady in the back riding for William Cycling is Miss Aguia. Uh, Miss, what I'm looking at right now, it seems that uh, both teams are comfortable with the lead riders. If you notice, they are. Uh, the two riders that, that sits in between the, uh, the lead group, if you notice, the, uh, psych, the, the, the cadence is not as fluent they have as, stopped the, as the lead riders. Yeah, so it seems that both they have sat up. team, yeah, it's comfortable, like, you know, they can win it. So I I I'm, I'm not sure they, they, they will bridge that gap. No, I think they have sat up. They have, they, they, these two, the two riders, Ms. Stevenson and Ms. Ramirez, and the chairs uh, have have stopped the chase, as we would say, and kind of sitting up, waiting for the rest of the peloton to come back. Yeah, the, the way it looks like the, uh, the peloton will catch uh, the two, the, the Miss Stevenson and Miss Ramirez in the middle. Bridge the gap. Yes, that's what it looks like right now. We have heard now that the, the gap has ballooned again. Yes. It's now two minutes, 45 seconds. Yeah, like I was saying, you, you, you could have seen in the, in the pedal stroke, that the two riders, the two lead riders, the pedal stroke is much more fluent than the chase, chase the, riders. So it shows. Um, this look like it, this. Uh, it's something like, I'll, I'll, I'll commit to this one. <laughs> You'll commit at mile 29. <laughs> at mile 29, Dave Yawood has predicted that Miss Aguia and Miss Dati will be coming to the city. So folks, yes. if you want to see who will win, you need to either stay alive here with us or come out to the Digi Park in Belize City for the finish. Two riders up front in the third, the third running of the Women's Cross Country Classic. Miss Aguia, rider number 11, riding in white. And Miss Daddy, rider number three, riding in green. Those are the two, two riders up front, folks. Uh, at this time, we must say that we need to thank Puma, Puma Energy, the energy of the 33rd Women's Cross Country Classic and Puma Lubricants. Those are the main sponsors of this race. At this time, we'll see if Ms. Uh, Rosita has any, any new information on those station prizes. It doesn't seem so. Um, we know that these two riders up front are still driving it. The two riders that were chasing have sat up they are just now taking a, a slow cruise, waiting yes. for the, the back crowd to come and catch them. They're, they're riding side by side with yeah. no intent. Just like I said earlier, I, I feel like we might be looking at one of the winners coming from that lead group. Um, yeah, I don't see, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see it possible. Yeah, the, 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 this, um, the, the two ladies, Ms. Stevenson and Ms. Ramirez, they have sat up and they're uh, waiting for Somebody, somebody to come in the back, somebody to come in the back um, to, to try and link up with them. Um, but we are trying to move on as we see two riders coming to try and catch uh, Stevenson and Ramirez. That looks like Miss, uh, Miss, Miss uh, Sharp and rider number four riding for LA Sweats, which would be Okay, so that's um, Elizabeth Stevenson coming across. That's number, she's number six. There are three there now. Um, guys, oh, the, okay, guys, as a female, as a female, right? Um, you, we have to take our hats off to these ladies because you know it's not easy to sit on a bike for over three hours, catching, chasing, doing everything in between. Um, 
my, my, I always um, say, I um, mean, my mind as a nutritionist think mm. that um, what do we do? What do they do to prepare? Well, I had a cyclist as a client, and what we did, we started feeding them a little bit more carbs seven to 14 days before the race. Mm -hmm. So they would have a good storage of glycogen in the liver for when they really need it. I know the LA Sweat team has a nutritionist on board, and I'm sure um, whatever they're taking is well full of a lot of sugars and um, not too much protein. Because mm -hmm. right now it's all about the sugar because they're expending energy, burning calories like crazy. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of this race, each would have lost about two pounds, literally. Yes. And so that's why it's important to uh, fuel and eat throughout the race to keep your energy level up. Yeah, and your, your electrolytes, because that's when a cramp happens, when you have shortage of potassium chlorides mm -hmm. and um, you have to drink. You have to drink exactly. not any fancy, any fancy um, drink, but just um, oral rehydration. Well, yes, you want drinks that uh, not only have sugar, but electrolytes in there. Mm -hmm. um, but fueling, fueling goes a long way because it reduces the chance of catching cramps also. Right, the cramps. And over 200 donors. Ramirez, there yeah, is um, Elizabeth Stevenson's young Mia, the Jamaican rider, Lori Sharp, Kaya Katoos, they are all here in the park. Uh, I've lost a little contact. Yes, cycling fans, this is the third, third running of the Puma Women Cross Country Race held here today on the Judge Price Highway. Some 11 ladies line up this morning. Three Belizean and eight foreign riders starting inside Nastio this morning and make their way towards the city where this race will come to its conclusion at the Digi Park there in Belize. We are just approaching the rear of the, the, um, the group of riders. This is the second group on the road. The other riders are some two minutes, 45 seconds ahead. That's um, Regina Dotti and Julian Aguela up front. We are here with the main field of riders. All the, seven, um, the other seven riders are here. There is um, young Kayla, Kayla Garcia, the Jamaican rider, Laurie Sharp, Kaya Katoos, number 14, Joyce Morton, number 12, Alexis Ramirez, the two um, other riders from Elias Sweats, Young Mia, and we have Elizabeth Stevenson. And the front Mia chasing, trying to close that gap, but it's a huge gap. And I guess the reason why these girls are not doing all because both of them have their rider up front. So let us see if they will make a uh, effort to chase that group. So if these guys, if these girls continue to ride at this pace, the two riders at the front will ride away with a victory today. So we'll have a winner, a new winner today. We're not sure if it's the LA Sweats or the uh, Williams Racing. So we'll definitely have a new champion today. And here, the main group of riders. So we'll stay here with this main group. The other camera will head up to the Tech de la Course. Yes, we have the Jamaican rider, Laurie Sharp, and the pace, her teammate. Joyce Morton, race number 14, and the pace, doing some 21 miles an hour. Here comes Elizabeth Stevenson, the champion of Trinidad and Tobago. Alexis Ramirez, looking sharp, looking smooth. There's a young Mia. And 
Kaya Catus and bringing up the rear is Kila Garcia, the Mexican rider from the Elias Wets. As we head towards mile 26 here and the Judge Price here, we head towards mile 26 and the Judge Price Highway taking over the pace. Alexis Ramirez. This is the free wheel. The gap will definitely pry open because these ladies are heading to a headwind. Here comes the young Mia Scarlotta. Kaya Katus coming out showing her face as we approach this little incline at mile 26. Seven ladies, three riders from Elias Sweat, I mean four riders from Elias Sweats, and three riders from Williams Racing in this group. Two riders up front, the two riders, Julian Aguela, and we have. Regina Dotte, those are the two riders up front, some two minutes, 45 seconds ahead of this group of riders. We just passed mile 26, heading towards the city folks. These ladies are riding like they're on a picket ride today. The pace have definitely dropped. They are doing some 17 miles an hour in a headwind. And the two riders up front are continuing to pry the gap open so the champion can come from the front. It will be, a, uh, it will be an all-out war to try to make it back to those two riders. So, leading the charge. Is Kayla Garcia on the front rides for LA Sweats, followed by the young Mia and dance now to the saddle. Alexis Ramirez out of Trinidad and Tobago, by the way, of California, rides for Williams Racing. Joyce Morton rides for Williams Racing. Kaya Katus representing Joel. The Jamaican rider, super domestic all morning. Lori Sharp, Lori Sharp, and Elizabeth Stevenson running for a while. They are all in this group heading towards the city. We are approaching mile 25 here on the Judge Price Highway, and it's Kayla on the front pulling off, taking over the pace. Is Alexis Ramirez followed by her teammate Lori Sharp, Joyce Morton, Mia, Kaya. Kaya is explaining something to Kaya is explaining something to um, to Elizabeth. They are chit chatting and sitting at the back there is Kayla having her eye fixated on the wheel in front of her. Kaya Katus. Kaya Katus saying something, she's dishing out some kind of orders to her teammate, strong Elizabeth Stevenson. And it's the, it's the um, it's a Jamaican rider on the front, open a small gap, closing that gap. It's Mia closing the gap to Laurie Sharp as we head towards mile 25. This is the main field of riders as the pace picked up to some 24 miles an hour. Apparently, you know, they're saying, let's get, let's, get, let's get going, let's ride. You know, we are not Sunday Cruise, and, and the two lead riders have opened a massive gap. Still the Jamaican rider on the front, still Laurie Sharp on the front. Race number 13, taking over the pace number two, Young Mia. It's Ramirez. This mud. Where he said us now? 420. 4 minutes 20 seconds. I don't believe these ladies will make it back to the Tech de la Course. The winner will come from between the two riders up front. The gap have been opened up to 4 minutes 20 seconds. That's a huge gap to close in only 25 miles so I don't believe that any of them the gap is 4 minutes 20 seconds that's a huge gap to try to close back a huge gap 
so it seems that um, these guys, these girls are um, giving away this race today, well, which in both teams have their representative up there, so their teammates are this away. Um, we, I, we always like have a lot of teams involved because when it's the two team, it's uh, just the two team and they have two teammates up there, they won't make any effort to chase down their teammate. Um, they're uh, hoping that their teammate can win the race, but those ladies have flown the coop, they are all the way up the road. Regina Dotti and Julian Aguela up the road. 425, Alana Will shouting up 425 is the gap. 425 is the gap, so it have extended a bit more. And so I can almost call it over from my experience. That's a huge gap to close. That's over a mile and change to try to close back to these two young ladies up front and driving the pace. Joyce Morton driving the pace, followed by Laurie Sharp, Elizabeth Stevenson, Kayla Garcia, Kaya Katus, Alexis Ramirez. As we approach mile 24, It's young Kayla, Kayla and the pace. Kayla Garcia rides for Elias Sweats, followed by Kaya Katus, Alexis Ramirez, Joyce, Joyce Morton waving to the camera, smiling away. So she's having a, a fun day here. There is um, Laurie Sharp out of Jamaica, Elizabeth Stevenson. And being up the rear is Mia Oscaleta. So we have about 24 miles remaining this event for this group of riders. For the other group, there's no way to be seen. We can see the stretch, the long stretch, and there's no sight of these ladies. So they are over a mile and change. Yes, there's no sight. This is mile 24. We're looking down all the way to mile 22, and we don't see no one in sight. It is mile 24. Looking down at the long stretch, no rider actually the service. We actually turn back for the Williams, have turned back to join back this group at the back. The two riders have flown away. The winner will come from those two. I don't believe that this group at the back will make it back to the Tech de la Course, the front of the race. I don't believe that they will make it back to the front of the race. They are too far behind. Here comes the seven young ladies. Four riders from the LA Sweats and three riders from Williams Racing. Here's Kaya Katus, where is number one. Kaya Katus, our very own Belizean Kaya Katus, rides for LA Sweat. Sitting on the wheel of her teammate, Maya. Just in front, we have Joyce Elizabeth. Alexis, we have the Jamaican rider, Laurie. We're back on 33rd. By Puma, Puma Energy, Puma Energy, the broadcaster of the 33rd Women's Fast Country Cycling Classic. Both two riders up front. Two riders up front, folks. Number 11 is a flow in the coop. They're all the way out front. Riders up front. Number 11 is a gear riding for William Cycling. And number, number three, Miss Daddy riding for, for LA Sweat. So, folks, we have two riders up front. Two riders with a time gap of four minutes and 20 seconds. These two riders are now passing Rockville. Number three, riding for LA Sweats, Miss Dottie, 
And number 11, Miss Aguia riding for Williams cycling team. Those are the two riders up front being chased by about seven riders who are some four minutes and 20 seconds behind. The last time we were here with you folks, Mr. Dave Yawood was bold enough at mile 29 to commit that the winner is coming out, out of these two. Now we'll try and get a commitment from Mr. Joseph. Mr. Joseph, are you in, in concurrence with Mr. Yawood that the, the, the winner is coming out the, from these two? I want to hear what you want to hear, folks. The good news or the bad news? Any news will do right now, Mr. Joseph. Just give us something. Yeah, I don't think the, that back peloton will catch back the two. Um, the the sprints will be between these two or the attacks will come from these two. I don't know between these two now who is the fastest rider because they are not riders that have been in Belize as much. So if you come down to a sprint, I'm not too sure who is the fastest rider. But ap apparently both teams are satisfied that the rider they have in front is is a rider that they that can win. Because if, if, if you weren't satisfied, then you would have been on the front trying to bring it back. So I, I believe that both teams are are and th this is what I bring back to, to mind. I'm saying that cycling is is a, is a is a team sports. Cycling is not an individual sport. So that notion of you want a Belizean to win, only need for that shot should you do okay. That the team win if if, if Kaya there about Kaya the thing that her teammate could win and that, that that's how she's riding. She's riding for her team. And so it's not an individual sport anymore and it's not, not a Belizean thing that you know get rid of their fool eh? Folks, we must say this is the 33rd running of the Women's Cycling Classic brought to you by Puma, Puma Energy, and Puma Lubricants. These are the powers that bring you the 33rd running of the Women's Cross Country Cycling Classic. We also want to say thanks to Santa Elena and San Ignacio Town Board, the Belize City Council, and to our Digi that powers this broadcast to you. Folks, if you want to see the finish of this big race, you must head out to the Digi Park to see the final, which will be between Miss Dottie and Miss Aguia, according to our two pundits sitting here to my right. Uh, we have gotten a, a time gap. The time gap has even ballooned more to five minutes and 12 seconds. Five minutes and 12 seconds with some 20 20 with some 20 miles or so to go that's where we're at folks two riders up front number 11 riding for the William cycling team Miss Aguia and number three Miss Daddy riding for the LA sweats that's where we are folks two riders up front uh, Dave what you got to say you're, you're looking good with your commitment yeah I'm getting ready to commit for the winner also <laughs> Um, so I watched the two riders pedal stroke, and I can see number 11 is a little bit more fluent on the pedal than number three. Uh, her, sh her cadence is a little bit higher, so that tells me she's, she's working harder. Uh, number 11 is much more fluent, and even her, her uh, body language, if you notice, um, her shoulders is more upright while number three have a little bit of rock in the shoulder so that tells me that she's putting out more energy definitely folks uh again we are here with the 33rd running of the women's cross country cycling classic brought to you by puma puma energy and puma lubricants two riders two riders making their bid for the 33rd running of this the big event um miss karen rosito at this time, you, you have not committed to anybody so far, so we will try and get a commitment out of you too. Maybe you can tell us your commitment and give us what you think is going on. Well, <clears throat> hi, good morning again, everyone. Um, I don't agree with you, Dave. I think I put I like my, that. I, I put, I, I, noticed, I noticed what you said, I listened that the number 11 shoulder was like dipping, she looked tired. But I looked at number three, she's smaller, and she, to me, was pedaling steadier, to me. So I'm going to put my eggs in that basket. But guys, no matter how you paint it, 
These women are so brave, 73 months. They're fit, they're ready. Please give them a round of applause. Even if you go to, to the hand, the mon hand monument, to cheer them on, but better yet, like Pala said, take off your pot, uh, come out here, uh, that DJ Park, because the fireworks is gonna happen. It's either gonna be a sprinter or a solo, but put it like this, it's gonna happen. And, uh, and for that woman that class crosses the finish line first, $3,000 in cash from Puma, that's a lot of money. You know, yeah, in the scheme of things. And a garland. Yeah, because, um, quickly, Karen, these guys, this woman ride in the States, I'm telling you, you can come the time that they will win such cash. Turn that into US, one, five years. They're not getting kind of. So, so when they get followers? They ride for 600 US. Five, they're pros. Pros, female ride for 500 or 600 US. So, so this is a goodly Easter money for them. Exactly. Paris, here I come. So, um, the, so the first person, I, we can say now, David's a foreigner, right? Yes. Um, she's going to get 3000 in cash, another 600 in cash, and another 500 in cash. Yes. So that's like uh, $4,100 in cash. Mm -hmm. She's going to get a garland, which she probably can't carry with her, right? You go carry the garland? Wear it. Wear it. And wha a whole bottle of champagne donated by loyalty wine, and gift baskets on Grace Belize and San Cas. Um, the weather, you notice the heat is picking up now. Yes. Look, and the wind has died up down a bit. So do you predict there'll be a sprint because the wind will change after mile four? Mm -hmm. When they pass mile four, I notice there's usually a preponderance of oxygen in the air due to the lateral berry tree. Mm -hmm. So like they get that second wind, but I have my bet still on the lead number three because she, to me, has shown um, the most promise. Just to say, I, I know I'll go against you, but <laughs> 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 and um, what I'm waiting for from Miss Dawn is the rest of station prizes because this year the Cycling Federation really work hard. They have 47, 46 station prizes because mm -hmm. I think one was withdrawn or something, but it's a lot of station prizes and that can be lucrative for these two because it's a lot of cash prizes. I was looking at them, um, <laughs> most of them are cash. What's that? No, I said a lot of the prizes are cash and jewelry, so it's nothing like not an all wrong trip tickets to San Pedro by San Pedro Belize and stuff like that. But everyone, um, the first, second, third, four, five category gets a prize. Who is four or five in this race? They're, they're I, I think it's the um, the two uh, girls from, uh, what's her name, Lovell? L Lovell and, and Yes. Uh, Gabby. Gabby. So I think, yes. Yeah, but they have to come in to get it, right? They have to make yes, it. Yes, I probably have to finish. Yeah, and then the last rider to cross the line still gets $100 yeah. cash. So I but would. Mm -hmm. From what I'm seeing, that both teams will, will benefit a lot from this race because they both have a ride out front, and so they would probably be sharing the station prize mm -hmm. and then sprint for the big prize. That's what it's looking like. Wow. Okay, so now we go to the very capable Mr. Ordonez. <laughs> Folks, we approach mile 18, just past mile 18, where two riders, Regina Dotti and Dotti and um, Julian Aguela have broken away. There are some over five minutes ahead of the main field of riders. The champion will emerge from these two young ladies. We'll have a new champion today. Will it be the rider from Williams Racing or will it be the LA Sweat? One rider will be victorious today and it's either between the um, five minutes, 5.20, the gap we have been um, made um, known by the officials that the gap is 5.20, 5.20, there's no way these ladies will make it back. The champion, there's the official 